Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of the Objectless Research Institute or uh, or ORI. I'll just probably call it Ori for short. Um, this faction is the one that kind of whooped me pretty badly in my Zorik playthrough. <clears throat> Excuse me, so I wanted to give them a run and see what their strengths and weaknesses were by playing through this faction for a 10-part series, but what I'm going to say right now is that this may not be a 10-part series because I think this faction is really powerful like not just strong but well you'll see here you can see for yourself so for this first episode i'm going to run through some of the ships and uh with just quick simulations on a one-on-one -on -one situation so we can kind of see how they do against other ships of their um of their class so we're going to start with this uh, just a standard frigate let's uh oh i should probably I should go over what weapons these things have so the standard frigate, this is just a variant that the creator of the mod put up. So we have two light machine guns, two rail guns, and this GT laser, which is a Ori special weapon. <laughs> it's um it's it's unique, and we'll see that here in uh, the simulation. I did add vessel modernization to it, but uh, besides that, I think everything else is pretty standard for whatever this creator made the ship to be in its um standard variation. So let's run a simulation here. So let's see, let's pick another frigate class. Let's go with a neutrino. That's a destroyer. That's a frigate. Drone frigate. I don't know which one the best frigate is for these guys. I'll just pick this one. Let's see how this uh the ship does. So this is kind of you know showcasing these ships in a one-on-one -on -one, uh situation. Also note that this um, platform special ability is accelerated ammo feeder which all of its weapons are ballistic so keep that in mind all right oh this is a phase ship okay well this is probably gonna be pretty easy and accelerated ammo feeder and like just look at that GT laser like it's really inaccurate but we'll see some more of that in a, another ship coming up I guess it's probably a, a very poor si uh, simulation because, well, actually, no, he's kicking my ass. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I need to kind of be careful. All right, now kick on accelerated ammo feeder. There we go. So this weapon is pretty insane. Let me exit the simulation. Let's go up to a uh, destroyer. What is this called? The Heavy Standard Destroyer, a Iris class. So this thing comes with these other Ori weapons called the Heavy Burst Blaster. 150 flux per second, perfect accuracy, 2,250 burst DPS. Um, these things can be pretty nasty. So this is a destroyer class. I did take off the Pelum missiles that this weapon comes with standard so I can add some more vents to it and the vessel modernization because it really needs a more uh, flux capacity and vents for all these heavy burst lasers. So let's run our simulation against a destroyer. This time, I guess we just do a, a Bushi since we're sitting right here. Let's go against their Tachi class destroyer. So these are the same class of ships. I don't know how this situation is going to go. I have not tested these two ships out together. I just, again, want to showcase these, um, these ships in a one-on-one -on -one combat. Alright, so after two salvos of the heavy burst. And cheesy oh, peasy. Alright. So those are two two uh destroyers. And can I see I can't see its uh stats from here, so let's go to the fleet screen real quick and <laughs> we'll get to the others here in a bit. So the thing is, it does take eight supplies a day, which I think is pretty high for a destroyer. This frigate takes uh, three supplies a day, but um, actually, I can check and see what that Bushi Destroyer takes in terms of supplies. But yeah, these things are pretty crazy because they have a common thing I'm seeing in this faction is that they have a lot of weapon slots, a lot, and they seem to be able to just kind of use them all at the same time. All right, let's go back to refit. Let's go on to the next um, ship here. It's this cruiser. Now the standard setup for this thing I, I'm not using. It comes with uh, eight assault chain guns which are high explosive damage specific uh, high, yeah, high explosive damage 
and then it comes with this Gauss Rotator, which is another Ori weapon, I believe. I don't think I've seen this before. It's a kinetic damage, 333 flux per second, good accuracy, 417 DPS. Um, this thing's pretty crazy. But yeah, so it came with eight of those assault chain guns. I'm like, well, I think I'm just going to replace them with five hypervelocity drivers because I'd rather have the kinetic damage to get through a ship's shields unless I'm specifically fighting against like the Zorg or something. So I kind of replace those with these hypervelocities. Uh, the dedicated targeting core is a pretty much a standard mod on most of these ships. And I did add expanded magazines. So this is a cruiser. So let's run a simulation against another cruiser here. Let's go with a Hagarin ship this time. Um, we'll go up against, I guess, a standard cruiser. Sure. Why not? All right. So these should be in the same class. Let's get around this um, nebula. So this uh, special system is point defense drones, which I'm going to keep close to the ship. And let's start firing. So the blue is that uh, Gauss cannon. So yeah, my... my um way of thinking when it comes to kinetic and high explosive i'd rather have the kinetic damage than like eight high explosives plus the assault chain gun are a shorter range because if a ship if you get through its shields you're you know like like what i'm doing here the kinetic damage weapons are doing less damage than a high explosive to the armor but i'm eventually going to win the situation i mean just look at this like this ship is obviously going to lose and i can just keep firing like all day I'll eventually get through its armor. Like, there we go. I'm starting to get through its armor a little bit. So, in this one-on-one -on -one situation, with these sim similarly classed ships, I'm going to win. Obviously. Alright, so we just exit the simulation. So, that's this ship. Although, it is pretty unique because um, the way that its weapon mounts are positioned, when a enemy ship in another test run I did, I should probably raise these combat readinesses, readiness up. The ship couldn't really disable the weapon mounts because it was either hitting on like the sides here or in the direct center. So um, it, it allowed me to have my shields down and continue firing with my main weapons, which was pretty cool. It's a unique looking ship. Then you got this ship. Um, I, I, I guess that's an island. I, I'm not exactly sure what this is a picture of. I, I, I really don't. I really don't know. I have no idea what this is supposed to be, but it's a giant picture on a ship I guess and it originally came with four heavy mauler weapons and two of these GT lasers I thought it would just be funny to have all these GT lasers because of their uh, crazy accuracy that they have well not well I mean like in bad bad accuracy so I just wanted to see these lasers just going all over the place so let's see a test run with this cruiser uh, let's see we fought against the Bushi we fought against uh, the Hagarins let's go down to who are these guys again all oh, right, that no, that's not fighting against them. They're they're boring. Um, here we go, a shadow yard. Let's go up against. Um, hmm. There we go, a cruiser of the line, with their crazy siege mode. I'm not sure how this is gonna go. Oh my god, I forgot. <sighs> Combat readiness. Try that again. All right. So this also comes with point defense drones. It also has a bunch of point defense lasers around it. Um, like I said, these these ships just come with so many weapon mounts. Like almost all of them do. All right. So you just kind of see how like the accuracy goes pretty crazy, but. Um, the ship has pretty high venting, has a lot of uh, flux capacity, and the range in these things are pretty crazy. Also, I noticed like the venting seems pretty fast. I have not put any upgrades into venting at all, and all the ships seem to vent pretty fast, so I don't know, maybe all ships vent this fast, I just haven't noticed. I'll just wait a little bit to get some burst damage. Wait a little bit, do some burst damage. Although, this is kind of odd because this ship isn't using its siege mode. There we go. Well. Wow. 
And with its point defense drones and all the point defense weapons it has due to all of its weapon mounts, missiles have a tough time of getting through. Like I, in my previous test runs that I've done before recording, I haven't really needed to raise my shields at all. And but you know the thing is to keep in mind that this is me piloting these ships, so the AI would probably do a worse job. Like I'm trying to stay at the maximum range of these weapons, and you know then stop firing and then do another concentrated burst, stop firing burst, so you know, the AI probably won't do as well with these ships, but still, they're, they're pretty damn strong. And you, you can kind of see here, I'm going to win this fight too. Let's go up to the Hello Kitty ship. Um, so yeah, this is a pretty silly faction, I, I guess you could say, because it has a Hello Kitty, it has this thing with a crazy image on it, I have no idea what the hell that is, and yeah, we'll eventually get to this, which is just a giant, uh, looks like a... Warhammer 40k kind of um, building just flying through space. But yeah, the Hello Kitty. So the standard mount of this Hello Kitty vessel was machine guns all the way down on both sides, which I think is pretty terrible because they're very short range and the way that these turrets are set up, they're not like actually turrets, they're just, you know, one way facing. So it was kind of just a huge waste of uh, space. It comes with these four PLM launchers, it comes with some more point defense weapons, it comes with a burst uh, laser. And then in its eyes came the high intensity lasers. Um, I replaced those with these energy pikes, which I believe is another Ori weapon. 750 flux per second, 700 DPS, 2000 range. 2000 with EMP damage, plus a dedicated targeting core. This thing could get pretty insane. Let's run another simulation, shall we? Let's see, we did the Shadow Yards. Um, you know what, actually running a simulation against the Nomads, we may actually lose. This Nomad Cruiser is pretty nuts. But like, I can't even see, like I'm just gonna put these things on auto fire because I can't even see the max range due to just its native range plus the dedicated targeting course. There we go. That is doing, what was it, like 750 DPS per second? And I have so much flux dissipation, like it's not even an issue. So here that comes. I guess I can launch my missiles. And the other thing is, is that all these ships seem to be pretty fast, just like natively. Like I haven't added any other mods to make them faster, so they can kind of just stay at max range and just pummel these ships to death. And this is just two of these energy pike weapons. And there we go, we got some EMP damage going through. I'm continuing to launch PLM missile launchers. And look at my flux! Look at my flux! Look at that range! Not even against the Snowmad Cruiser is it going to be a, probably a problem. And this thing, this Snowmad Cruiser is nuts! It is an insane ship. But no problem for the Hello Kitty Cruiser. Oh yeah, and a special system is, it has a burn drive, so if someone gets close enough, I could probably just like turn around and, and just be like, burn. Get the hell out of there. Alright, so that's the Hello Kitty Cruiser. This thing, man. Alright, so this thing comes, on its standard variant, it comes with, um, how much is this, seven, seven high intensity lasers. And I was like, well forget that, I'm gonna put all these energy pike lasers. So. Each energy pike is 30,000 credits, so this ship is very expensive to get it um, outfitted like this, but oh my god, wait till you see what this thing can do. Also keep in mind, this thing takes 17 supplies a day, okay? So it, it is a lot, but my god. Let me run a simulation, I don't know, let me pick, uh, let's go with the Valkyrians this time. Let's go up against their, in their biggest ship, a battleship, okay? A battleship. This is a cruiser. This is a cruiser. I'm going to auto fire because once again, its range is past the range that I can actually see. I'm going to switch to their PD lasers so that my ship will automatically fire. It is, an, again, a very fast ship. It comes with a high energy focus on top of... Oh, this is... Like, let me... There we go. We'll target this. I don't even know... Oh, I'm actually kind of facing the wrong way. Oops, let me... There we go. And I'll do high energy focus. I'll just quickly vent. Oh shit. Oh shit. That may actually hurt. That may actually hurt. I 
I wanted to wear the shot on my um, engine so it wouldn't get rid of my in my weapons, but that actually kind of was a bad idea. Now I'm just kind of spiraling in space. Shoot. <laughs> well, this is not a good test run. Okay. Let's try this again. Yes, yeah, so like I can vent almost instantaneously, it seems. And then keep firing. I guess maybe against the ship it... Maybe it's luxury reserves are too much for me to um, actually get through. Yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> Alright, maybe this... I thought I was going to be able to destroy the ship, but I guess not. Even with the high energy focus on... Yeah. My sustained DPS when my flux is um, at max isn't high enough to counteract the flux uh, venting and just how much reserves the ship, I, I guess, has. But um, I hope you can kind of see the potential of the ship. Let me let me test it up, up against something else. Let's run another simulation. Uh, let's go up against like the most powerful Zorg weapon in the game, this cube. All right, actually, to take some hits there, I'm going to vent. But just like the extreme range, the high mobility of this ship, and just the like sheer firepower of these energy bikes is insane, man. Let me vent again, especially when it comes against Zorg, because they don't even have any shields to wear any of this damage, so. It's just like, it's just free damage. Look at that. This is the most powerful Zorg ship in the game. Like, I, I think of this as one of the most powerful ships in the game. This Zorg cube is no joke. But the range of those energy pikes, the mobility of the ship is... The small profile that it also has is insane. It's insane. Alright, so enough of that one. Let's go up uh, to this cruiser. The tester class. I loaded this one up with the standard loadout, but I think I took away the missiles to add more capacitors and vents. So this thing comes with uh, some heavy maulers, it comes with these energy pikes, actually I think I put the energy pikes there. Um, it also comes with a couple of these Gauss rotators, and more heavy maulers in the back, and again a lot of point defense weapons, which seems to be a commonality with the variants of the o Ori uh, faction. So let's run another simulation. Um, what, do we have? what have you not done yet? Oh yeah, I haven't, I haven't tested against any of these type of ships. Let's go up against uh, Supernova Class Elite Cruiser. So this specific ship, man, I think this is the one that kind of killed me uh, in my Zorg playthrough. At least in the test run, I think it destroyed one of my Borg cubes. Zorg cubes, whatever. Uh, maybe not. I think it was a bigger ship than I'm thinking of. So again, we have these energy pikes that have just an insane range. I should probably just put those things on auto fire. Let's go to the um, Gauss guns and the heavy maulers. And the flux generated by these things just isn't enough, I think, for the firepower they have. Whoa, what the hell did I just get hit with? Well, this ship kind of had no chance. Uh, maybe we should test it up against something bigger. Uh, what is this thing? An assault battleship. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's do it. Again, let's put that on auto on uh, auto fire. Hello, auto fire. There we go. Whoa! Oh yeah, this thing. I remember you. <laughs> I've actually played with this ship before. All right, let me go to uh, get in range here. Start firing. So again, just the range of all of these weapons, the fact that my ship is so mobile that I can always stay at the maximum range. Like, I'm eventually going to win this fight as well. 
so you can see that. Alright, last ship. And I'm sorry if this is boring you just watching these one-on-one -on -one situations, but I just want to see the, the power, the power that each one of these ships holds by itself. I have not even done any battles with all these ships put together. I, I, uh, we'll, we'll do that and we'll find that out together uh, how crazy this fleet can be when it has all the ships together. So this thing comes with uh, six of those energy pikes. It comes with three Mjolnir cannons, um, multiple heavy maulers, hyper velocity drivers, point defense weapons out the yang, pulse lasers, uh, these hurricane merv launchers. It, it's, it's just insane. It is insane. Let's run a simulation. <laughs> uh, what could even like possibly defeat this? I don't even know. Let's uh, let's go up against that um, Valkyrian ship. It was the only one that was able to hold off the uh, that other ship I showed with all those pike lasers. So this ship also has a burn drive. So it seems like most of them have either burn drives or point defense weapons, point defense drones. So in this case, because of the more of the higher flux reserves that this ship has, those six pike lasers can fire enough to actually get through the shield. So you saw the smaller ship, it didn't have a chance, but this ship, due to its flux reserve, look at that. I didn't even get to the main weapons, man. To all this. To all this. I don't even know if there's a ship that can handle this. I don't, I don't even know. Um, yeah, like, I, I don't know, that's, that ship that I just fought against is, is very powerful. Um, yeah, I, I just, I don't know if there's any other ship that can do it. Let's try a, a Bushi capital ship. Those things are pretty strong too. Yeah, so what I wanted to show with this is that is the kind of the reason why I don't think I'm going to do a very long um, series on this faction. It's just, it's, I think it's just too powerful. It's just way too fucking powerful. Or, sorry, <laughs> apologies for cursing. Yep. And look, I'll vent. Look how fast this thing vents. Now, I don't remember ships venting that fast. That's like super fast. I, I just don't understand how it's going that fast. Anyway, so that's a look at these ships. There are more in the arsenal of um, the Ori, especially their bombers, which we'll see when we actually do a fleet on fleet combat. I'll show that in the next episode, most likely. So thanks for watching this first introductory episode. I've shown off most of the bigger ships and uh, what they what what they have the capability to do so I'm curious to get these guys in an actual fight all together well not all together because you can see my um, logistics can't actually handle all these ships together but still I like to see this in a fleet against another fleet so that will come on to the next episode so thanks for watching and I'll see you then take care